Hey, everybody, thank you for joining us today. We pray that this message reaches you wherever you are at today in whatever situation you are facing. We pray that the Lord ministers to your life. Hang on till the end, and I want to say a couple more things to you before we're done. Good morning. Thank you, Landmark Church. What a joy it is for me to be back uh, with you, so many friends and lots of you that we don't know, but what a blessing. We had a great time in the first service, and the Lord has already been blessing around the altar. I appreciate the confidence of your pastor. I met Pastor Justin 23 years ago when he was a Bible student and I was the professor and my very first Bible class, a preaching class. And uh, so um, I've told you before, somebody said, what would you do? How, how many students you have? We had four students in that first class. Somebody said, what would you do with them? I did the only thing I could, split them up into small groups. Amen. <laughs> That's all you can do. But I appreciate uh, uh, him so much. I appreciate Pastor Wesley, all of your team. Uh, isn't the technology uh, wonderful? Uh, not only Pastor Justin could give us a greeting, it's quite possible he could be watching this service. And I was thinking, wouldn't it have been wonderful can you imagine if Moses would have had that technology and he could have kept an eye on what was going on when they built the golden calf he might have stopped got to be able to stop some of that before they got it built but uh, it's just a high honor to be here I know during the summer you've been going through a a series from your uh, pastor and uh, brother Corbin last week uh, about uh, summer in the Psalms and Pastor Justin didn't require me to, to speak from the Psalms. He, he just indicated to follow the Lord. But I did feel directed to take a, a couple of texts from the book of Psalms. So hopefully some of what I say will just be an echo, a repeat of some of the things I'm sure they've already said. So I want to read from Psalm chapter 30 and then uh, Psalm chapter 56 and then finally Psalm... Uh, 126. So we start with the 30th Psalm. Would you like to stand for the reading of the Lord's Word? Psalm 30 in verse 5. For his anger is but for a moment. His favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Let's move over to chapter 56. And we go to chapter 56 and verse 8. Your, you have numbered my wanderings. Put my tears into your bottle. Are they not in your book? And then finally, I take you to Psalm 126 and verses 5 and 6. Those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. And he who continually goes forth with weeping and bearing seed for sowing, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. And Lord, we pray that you would anoint your word and anoint and prepare every listener to receive what you have for us today. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you were an astute uh, observer to what I said, and you may be seated, you you probably picked up on there was one word or one thing found in all three texts, and that is There's others of us, um, you can spend many years with some loved ones and never see them cry. My son had a friend who told him that the only time he ever saw his dad cry was when their dog died. He said family members died, he never cried. But when the dog did, 
the tears started to flow. And sometimes, especially men, we project an image that, uh, you know, somehow we think it's, it's uh, uh, not really masculine to, to, to shed any tears. And so we try to hide it. And we do a lot of our crying, if we're honest, kind of in private. I think about Joseph when he saw his brothers after many years, including baby brother Benjamin. They brought him back and it was too much for him. He said, excuse me. And he went in the room and he just lost it right there, even by himself. But I want to take these texts and a couple of more observations and kind of link them together, talk to you about tears from the Psalms. Because uh, you probably learned, some of you knew it already, and I'm sure the pastor brought it out when he started this series, there's all different kinds of Psalms. Hallelujah Psalms, praise Psalms, worship Psalms. But there's also Psalms of lament, and Psalms of anguish, and Psalms that were written and born out of great difficulty. And so with that in mind, I want to talk to you about tears this morning, the treasure. There's a sacredness, there's a tenderness, there's a holy holiness in tears. The treasure of tears. The first aspect that I wanted to bring about is we should all know what it is to experience tears for our own sins. I, I, I'm reminded of the contrast between Esau in the Old Testament and Peter in the New Testament. We're told that when Peter denied that he knew the Lord and the rooster began to crow, Peter went out and wept bitterly. He was weeping because he knew he had sinned despite his claims that he would never do it. And he knew he had broken the heart of his Lord. But then we're told about Esau who sold his birthright for a bowl of soup and he went to try to exchange it uh, to get it back some way and the Bible said he sought it uh, with tears but uh, he could not get it back. That text used to bother me. I used to think, well, uh, anybody that comes back with tears, uh, uh, surely the Lord is going to receive them. But if you look closely at that text, God was not uh, refusing Esau because he was sorry for his sins. Esau was crying because He'd lost the inheritance. That's why he was crying. So all of us had sinned. And we certainly need a Savior. And even after we're saved, we still slip, stumble, fall, and fail. But, but I hope that there is a, within us a, a desire to live as close to the Lord as we can. That some way, somehow, we're going to be moved with genuine tears in regard to our own sin. How many of you, when you found Jesus, when you got saved, whether you were a child, an adult, however old you were, how many of you cried at that experience? Can I see your hand? Keep it up just for a second. Would you look around? Look at that. All over this place, you had tears in your eyes. Thank you. You may put those hands down. I, I tell you that uh, that's, a, that's a good thing. That's a positive thing. That is a, a reminder that when we sin, we don't just break the laws of God. We've broken the very heart of God. But we can weep our way back to Him. Godly sorrow brings a person to repentance. That's what the New Testament said. Now you don't have to cry. If you couldn't raise your hand, you don't have to be weeping on the outside when you come to Jesus. But I tell you, you have to be crying on the inside. you got to be heartbroken. And uh, you come to Christ that way, and he said he would not cast anyone out. And the reason he's able to do that, because Jesus himself was a man of tears when he came. I think he cried, the scripture indicates kind of multiple times, he cried this, he cried out that. But there's two specific times in the four gospels where he wept. One of them, he wept over the city of Jerusalem. He said, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often I would have gathered you unto myself like a hen does its chicks, but you would not come to me. What Jesus was doing there was praying and weeping over the whole city, over the whole nation of Israel. And I just want to hit the pause button and ask, 
Anybody ever cry and weep for your city? Anybody crying and weeping for our country and the condition of this world? I know everybody's stirred up and everybody's angry. Everybody's mad. Everybody's ready to do something. But here's an idea. What if we would weep and pray and let tears flow from our eyes on the condition of our land? The other time that Jesus cried, can anybody remember it? The Bible said, Jesus wept. This is a sharp group here. Amen. I'd, I'd say you're every bit as sharp as that first group crowd that I preached to. Jesus wept. Shortest verse in the Bible, but in many ways it has come to me to mean to me one of the most important verses in the Bible. You know the setting. He had waited deliberately after hearing the news that Lazarus was sick. Jesus waited till he died, and then he went to his friend's house. Martha couldn't understand it. Mary later joined Jesus. She said the same thing her sister did. Lord, if you'd been here, our brother would not have died. But Jesus said he's going to live. She said, I know he'll live at the last day. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that were dead, though he believes in me, yet shall he live. He said, where have you laid him? And they took him out to the, the tomb. And that's the context for where it just said Jesus wept. Someone said, do you think he was weeping tears of joy in anticipation for what he was getting ready to do? And you know, that, that sounds, well, at least one person does. It. <laughs> Amen. Uh, you can't make this up, people. You can't plan it even better. <laughs> Nicely done. It's possible. It's possible, but I just wonder sometimes if we try to make Jesus so, so divine that we really don't recognize he was really human too. And I think the context tells us why Jesus cried. When he looked on the left, Martha was crying. He looked on the right, Mary was crying. He entered into their sufferings and I believe that's why he wept. And if it's true, that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You know what that means? He didn't just weep with them. That means he'll weep with us. Has anybody found it so when you were at the funeral home? Or you were at the cemetery? Or you were in that hospital room? Jesus comes and delights to, to weep with us now. And then one day we'll say, Lazarus, come forth and live. When I look at these psalms, and, and, and that, that text, that last one, Psalm 126. The first two were probably passages I read to you were written by David. This one may have been written by Ezra or someone in that time frame. But he's talking about the tears of the sower. He said, they that sow in tears, they're going to reap in joy. And if you'll go and weep and bear the seed, you'll come again with rejoicing, bringing your sheaves with him. Those that sow in tears, they're going to reap in joy. Paul was an example of this. To the Ephesians, we're told in the book of Acts, he said, for three years, day and night, he ceased not to warn the Ephesians with tears. Oh, that we would minister with tears. Oh, that we would tell people, yes, Jesus is alive. Yes, he is coming. Yes, he will judge all men. Yes, there is an eternity in either heaven or hell. But we can't preach such things flippantly and casually. We need to have tears in our eyes when we're telling people about such a, a faith. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. How many of you know not all the reaping happens immediately? God's got a lot of precious saints. He's got pastors, he's got missionaries, he's got leaders, he's got laymen, he's got people of all walks of life that have tried to live for him. And they've tried to spend their, their time in ministry efforts for him. But it seemed like from their vantage point, not a whole lot has happened. Is there anybody, am I, I speaking to anybody that feels like I do sometime that I've done so little in the kingdom and I've failed him in so many ways? And sometimes we don't have a lot to show for what we've done. But I remind you for those who faithfully sow in tears, 
The promise is there'll come a day they will reap in joy. It may not be the same day, week, month, or year. It may be many years. But the Lord is able to put it all together to fulfill his holy word. When I think about the psalmist and all these different tears, the tears of the sufferer comes to mind. It's a hurting world. You're sitting very close to people that are bruised and hurt this morning. We all have been at one point or another, or we will be, or we are right now, or all of the above. But the tears of the sufferer. Why could David, how could David write such language that you've been hearing about every Sunday here in the Psalms during the summer? He wasn't just a mighty man. He wasn't just a giant slayer and a king and a military general. David was also a man who was acquainted with grief. He cried when his baby died. He cried up until the baby died, believing for healing. And then he wiped his, his eyes, wiped the tears away. Do you remember when his son, years later, Absalom died? He said, oh, Absalom, Absalom, he cried. Would to God I would have died for you. But he wept his way through that experience. He and his mighty men came to the city of Ziklag. And when they did, they found out the whole city was in ruins. Everything had been burned to the ground. At that time, they thought that all of their loved ones, their wives and children had been killed. Now later they found out they were only taken captive. But when David and his men saw the whole city laying in ruins, the Bible said they wept until they could weep no more. Has anybody ever gone through a dark night of the soul like that? I have been on a couple of occasions. I would heard about a tragedy or a loss of life and I have showed up to be with the family a couple of days later. My initial thought is, well, the person seems to be holding up pretty well and doing all right. But then they would tell me the reason that I'm not crying. I don't have any tears left. Does anybody know what I'm talking about here? Gordon Jensen picked up his pen 40 or 50 years ago and he wrote a song that said, God weeps along with man and takes him by the hand. Tears are a language that God understands. Now I want you to know sometime when there's no words you can get out, when all you've got is a broken heart and tears, He knows and He cares and He understands. And that's why that text in chapter 56 said, the psalmist said, Lord, my, my tears, you've written them down in a book. Will you not put them in a bottle? Now that's, that's wonderful imagery for us. Have you ever thought about, did you know that verse was there? That in heaven there are bottles and the bottles are filled with our tears. What does that mean? Well, that means God keeps his word. He knows everything you've ever gone through. He knows every scar, every battle, every storm. You cannot sigh without him knowing it. He knows all the number of hairs on your head. For some of you... We all do. There's not a lot to count that. But for others, he knows how many hairs are upon our head. He not only calls, he not only knows how many stars there are, how many millions of galaxies with millions of stars, he calls them all by name. That's the greatness of our God. But he also has got bottles in heaven, and he keeps the tears in them. You know what that means? That means he knows, he cares. Everything you've gone through. He's so different. I tell you what, I've gotten convicted the last few years because uh, everybody, you know, where I travel and all people say, will you pray for me? Will you pray? Will you pray? And it's so easy to say, yes, I'll, I'll, I'll pray. And then we're guilty because if you're like me, you forget to pray. So I've tried to find ways to help in that. And so if somebody says, will you pray for me? I'll say, I'll pray for you if, if, if you'll pray for me. Let's get us both praying. And then sometimes they say, will you pray for me? I'll say, as often as I can remember, I'll pray for you. And then I try to pray every day, Lord, for all of those that I said I would pray for them. 
and I've forgotten about them. Lord, would you be mindful of them and would you touch them? I see it happen on Facebook, though, every day. Some need is mentioned there, and people write in, and they say, pray, 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 pray. And I know some percentage of the people there that are writing that are actually praying, but I want to say to a lot of these folks saying, pray, no, you're not. You're on Facebook. <laughs> I remember giving final exams. Now, we didn't have to worry about your pastor back when, when I met him in 2000. You know, we didn't have Facebook, okay? We barely had the Internet. I think Al Gore had just invented it, you know, a little bit before then. But on the night before final exams, you get on Facebook, and so many of my students were on there saying, studying for final, studying for final, studying for final. I wanted to say, no, you're not. You're on Facebook. What I'm saying is we are human, we are frail, we forget, we forget from one time we see somebody hurting to the next time. But I'm telling you, God never forgets. He's got bottles in heaven that are filled with the tears, every tear that you've ever shed. I was teaching about that in one place after church, the lady came up to me and she said, she said, Brother Terry, I don't think he's... He has bottles for my tears. He's got barrels. He's got barrels. That's how many tears that I've shed. But then that brings me to the last thing, the tears of the saints. And you'll have to look a long time to find a greater text than that, than this. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. It's a contrast between now and then. Here, there's tears. There is joy. Here weeping might come. Yonder joy is coming for sure. Here it is night, but yonder it is morning. And God is going to have the last laugh. And God, he weeps with us now, so he will laugh with us then. That's the promise we have. Amen. I'd like to ask the praise team to slip up here and just get ready to minister at the end I'm not quite finished but you'll know that I am at least you hope that I am or think that I am when I ask the uh, praise team to come I read a passage in the book of Isaiah it said and God shall wipe all tears from their eyes do you believe that that's future tense. God is going to wipe the tears from their eyes. I read it in Revelation chapter 7. A great multitude that no man could number. That had come out of great tribulation and washed their robes white in the blood of the Lamb. And it was said of them, they hunger no more, they thirst no more. They don't need the sun to shine on them or any heat. For the Lamb that's in the midst of them. It's going to feed them and lead them to living fountains of waters. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. That's one of the reasons he's coming back is to wipe the tears away. I read it in Revelation 21. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying. Neither shall there be any more pain for the former things have passed away. Have you ever thought about that moment? God's going to wipe the tears he could do it a lot of different ways. When the leper said, you can make me clean, Jesus could have just spoke the word and he would have been clean. He could have just given divine indication he could have been clean. But you know what Jesus did? He went and he touched the leper. You know why? Because that man has lived his whole life as an untouchable. Nobody could or would touch him. Jesus said, I'll touch him. And I'm telling you, out in eternity, God could, he could separate our tears from us in a lot of different ways. He could just say, there should be no more tears, and they'd all be gone. He could assign somebody else to do it. Hey, Gabriel, Michael, Archangel, 
cherubim, seraphim, find a, a redeemed human and wipe the tears out of their eyes. He's not going to do that. He could, he could assign the prophets and the priests and the preachers and the apostles and the disciples and the great saints in Scripture and through history say, take care of the tears from all these other people. He's not going to do it that way. Did I? Did you hear how he's going to do it? He said, and God himself shall wipe away every tear from their eye. God's going to do it. He knows what you've gone through. He knows what you're going through right now. Somebody said, when I get to heaven, I'm going to tell the Lord a few things. They said, when I get to heaven, I'm going to ask him this and ask him that and, and demand a reason for this. Can I just say something here? No, you're not. Well, if you happen to make it to heaven, it'll be the same way that I did by grace. And we're not going to demand anything or ask him anything. But I think when we see him, we'll fall at his feet and cry, Holy and he will help us up and somewhere out in eternity God himself is going to wipe the tears that'll answer every question we've ever had do you believe it stand to your feet with me Hey everybody, thank you so much. We are so honored that you chose to join us today for this message. And our prayer is for you and your family that you would be uplifted and encouraged. If today you receive Christ or if you would like to give to the vision of Landmark Church, if you would go to our website, www.landmarkchurchok.com, there's more information there, how you can do all of that. And also if you have a prayer request, please let us know how we can be praying for you guys. We love you and hope you have a blessed time.